Let's bring in our political correspondent, Simon Young, for more on this story. Uh, hi, Simon. What more can, we, can you tell us about these 14 identities that Anis Amri went by? Yeah, the Berlin attacker had used 14 different names when he registered with the authorities in Germany. And indeed, he was registered uh, as an asylum seeker in, uh, in the towns of Oberhausen, Dortmund, Karlsruhe and Freiburg. Uh, so, you know, that shows you this was, uh, there was method to this. Uh, but the authorities were looking at him very closely indeed, following his every move for a while. And they were aware of these different identities. Indeed, in one uh, case last summer, uh, it is reported that uh, the authorities issued a temporary permit for him to stay in Germany under one of his uh, chosen names in order to give him, so it is said, uh, the impression that he wasn't under scrutiny. Sam, we also know that authorities say that Amri tried to find instructions on how to build a bomb. He was in, co in contact with the Islamic State and he offered himself up as a suicide bomber. Why weren't authorities able to arrest him earlier? Yeah, I think that uh, the authorities could have put more restrictions uh, on Anis Amri. As you say, he was identified as a potential terrorist. He was in contact with extremists. He was looking for support from them. He was researching bomb making uh, on the internet. You know, there were many reasons, also bearing in mind his history of criminality in Tunisia, where he came from, and in Italy, where he had spent some time. There were many reasons uh, to, uh, you know, potentially lock him up, hold him in custody for a time, or at least require him to report to police, which would have prevented him moving around. And why the authorities did not do those things is something that parliamentary commissions and other experts are looking at very closely right now. OK, Simon, I want to ask you about how Germans are reacting to all of this. Let's take a look at an opinion poll that was taken after the Berlin truck attack. Now, that attack stoked considerable debate about Germany's domestic security. If we take a look, the polling institute Infratest DMAP asked people in Germany whether they feel safe or unsafe in the country. An overwhelming majority, nearly three quarters, said they do feel safe. Only a quarter say they feel unsafe. So Simon, it does seem that despite the Berlin Christmas market attack, the vast majority of Germans still do feel safe in their country. Yes, indeed. I mean, according to this poll, Germans have reacted uh, to the recent attack, uh, not with panic. Um, and, you know, most of them feel safe, uh, w which is pretty general, but, uh, you know, that's what they've told these, these pollsters. Uh, most of them, a majority of 57%, say that they think uh, the, the authorities are on top of the situation, although 40% have expressed concerns. But I think where it becomes really interesting is if you break it down by party allegiance. And there, uh, those who say they're going to vote for the uh, AFD, the new anti-immigrant party in Germany at the election later this year, 33% uh, of them only say they feel safe. Uh, you know, two thirds say they feel unsafe. So that supports this idea that there's a link between, uh, you know, in a lack of security, a general sort of fear about the way things are going and the rise uh, of populist uh, parties. And I think that's something that uh, people have said is the case in other countries too. Political correspondent Simon Young, thank you for sharing your insight with us.